Hi, welcome to Almost Cooperstown. I'm Mark. And this is Gordon, and we love talking about baseball. So here we are at episode 21, and we're going to follow up last week's episode 20, which uh, was about the best player for each franchise in the National League. And this uh, this episode, we're going to do the American League, and there are some... Uh, you know, teams that have not had any uh, World Series winners. And so it makes it a little tougher, right, when there isn't a World Series, uh, you know, to sort of put behind your greatest player aspect. I, I, interestingly, there's actually a team where they do have a World Series, yet I don't know if there would not be a ton of players from that team you would necessarily elevate to best player in the franchise. There might be one I think would be up there. But we can. T- it'll be interesting when we get to them. But I do think you know having a World Series uh, uh, in your pocket uh, helps your best player in the franchise because you're remembered forever for bringing the championship. And paradoxically, the less fran- you know World Series each franchise has, the more valuable it becomes. So franchises that only have one World Series, you know, obviously, uh, the, if if the star franchise player was the one that actually helped them win that one. Then it, even if there was maybe a player that was statistically greater or somewhere else in the franchise but didn't ever get that, that might be enough, you know, Absolutely. in the minds of the fans. Certainly. Absolutely. And and so we're going to go down the teams in order of the way that they finished in the, in the league this year, East, uh, Central, and West. Most interestingly, the first team we're going to talk about that did win, not only won the East, but they beat the second place team in, in the playoffs and they're going to be playing for the American League Championship. And they have never won a World Series. Yeah, the, the, the Tampa Bay Rays. And they're they're an expansion franchise, one of the newest franchises. So I think that that immediately makes it a little bit trickier because they're a franchise that's only existed during the agency of free era. And they're so late that you just don't have people that have played for them for like their entire career, like a lot of the other more, you know, historical franchises have. And I think if you think of the Rays without thinking twice – There's a name that comes to mind first, and I didn't pick him as my number one franchise player of all time, but I kind of think most people would probably think this guy is the number one. I think Longoria is, you know, that's, that's, I think he would be the guy most people would have up there, and I think you could put him at number one. You could. I I think it's really him, or I think Carl Crawford. And, and 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 that's exactly I picked Carl Crawford, and the reason I did is, and I looked at the the historical stats for Tampa. Carl Crawford holds like every team record, like Louis Castillo holds all the Marlin records, you know. And, and he was the player for them when they first got started. And right. yeah, he did go on to have some productive seasons, you know, the, elsewhere in his career. But the bulk of his major productivity was with Tampa, with, and, and with those were not Rays. great raised teams no. that he was a part of so and then and then you probably have like a guy like david price but they're just too recent to really have a ton of guys yeah yeah actually when i went down four deep in this thing i came up with james shields and i thought okay that's too many yeah rays. james shields is, yeah, should think, not I'd, be in this conversation at that point you've gone too far exactly and we go from one that was difficult due to lack of people to one that's probably the most difficult just due to the plethora of people you'd have to nominate no doubt and 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 not even on my list um, is uh, the late great Whitey Ford, who just passed away uh, last week, uh, and a guy who played some baseball and stickball with my dad. So uh, shout out to Whitey, who uh, one of the greatest Yankee pitchers of all time. You could argue that Rivera might right. be. And, ahead and, of shout, him. And, and shout outs to Whitey, and it's a very you know sad thing. But I, I'm going to be honest, dude had no chance of sniffing the top five. No, no, he did not. He did not. And then that's because the Yankees have greatness. It's it was hard. It was hard to choose. It was easy to choose number one because. The Yankees are because of him. They are who they are. They called it the house that Ruth built for yeah, a reason. It's, it's Babe Ruth, but then once you get past Ruth, I, know, is I, it Garrick or DiMaggio? Is it Mantle? I mean, wow. Yeah, and then we were like, we haven't even started talking about like Reggie Jackson. <laughs> yeah, right. Which I don't, I don't know if I would put him as a um, as a Yankee. Uh, I would probably have him. Uh, for another team, which we might talk True. about a little later. So uh, now uh, another team that doesn't have uh, any. Uh, I don't – actually, they do have a Hall of Famer, and we're going to pick him. I'm wrong. Okay. Yes. The first guy on the list, okay, Doc Holliday, Roy Holliday, uh, to me, is the all-time greatest player in the history of the Blue Jay franchise. Yeah, I think – I think he would be up there. It's hard for me to really say that there, there was only one other guy that – like, and I wonder how much of it is him because he's the greatest franchise player of all time or one of them or he's just so beloved by the fans that he's elevated to that status. Because I think, you know, I think you'd also have guys like Carlos Delgado up there. Delgado was a beloved uh, beloved player, absolutely. Yeah, you've got probably, you know, I think a guy that needs to be talking about is Batista. 
Oh, not as the greatest player not, in no, history. Probably, Joey Bats is cool, but he's not the greatest player. Exactly. And I think it's his persona elevates him, but what he means to – it's hard to overstate what he's meant to that team and that franchise because he has been their player really since Doc Holliday left. And, and you know, I talked about this guy before, and, and again, you didn't know too much about him before. He pitched there a long time. Dave Steeb, you know, solid, really, really – Long-term Blue Jay played at a high level for a long time when they didn't have a lot of great players. Mm-hmm. Um, hard to name him. Certainly can't name him over Halliday. And and the other guy who the Blue Jays, remember, helped them win a couple of those championships in the back in the 90s, Robbie Alomar, mm-hmm. only played five years with the Blue th- Jays. That makes it really hard because you're not I – don't, I don't know if anybody would mentally classify – Ravi Alomar as a Blue Jay. Now, unfortunately, because of me and my age, in my mind, he's an Indian. That's interesting. Well, and, and, and the thing I remember about Ravi Alomar was he lived in the hotel where the ballpark was. So he didn't have to go anywhere. He, you know, he overlooked the, the Rogers Center and he lived in his uh, room. Lived in, all he had field. to do was live and breathe baseball. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and what a great player. But yeah, a Halliday to me is the guy. Okay, so go down uh, as we go down the list, and the uh, I think the uh, Orioles finished ahead of the Red Sox this year. Uh, it was pretty close. Uh, yeah, at the I, bottom of that. Division. I want to say you're correct. On so, that. so the St. Louis Browns uh, moved to Baltimore. Uh, there are no St. Louis Browns in my estimation that belong even on this list, so it makes it a little easier. And also, their general performance over the last. I don't know, 25 ish years also makes it a little bit easier. Maybe not... Chris Davis isn't the greatest player in Baltimore. <laughs> no, so no, I mean, not. the thing is, is when you look back at the greats in the franchise, they got some winners there. I well, mean, I think it's pretty easy to pick number one. I think it is. And, and one of the great things about this player, uh, I, I know we've, we've talked about this on this several times. Go ahead, go ahead. That he has pitched in all three of their World Series appearances in three different decades. It's, that's just cool. Yeah, Jim Palmer. Jim Palmer. Actually, I don't think it was three decades. Uh, was yes, it in the it 60s, 70s, and 80s? Yeah, yeah, it was 66, the 70 team, and the 1983 uh, Baltimore Orioles. Yeah, and so, I mean, there's so – I mean, that's like – and then you still have Cal Ripken Jr. and Brooks Robinson. Right. A lot of people would say and Cal Ripken Jr. is the greatest, but, but the winning that, that Palmer did – uh, Is big. Yeah, and, and the jockey underwear commercials yeah. too. <laughs> uh, um, how about the Red Sox? Now, there's a team that has a lot of great players. Um, oh, it, easy. W- easy. Okay, now, now did, did this player ever win a World Series? I don't think so. How could he, right? The Red Sox hadn't won since... 1908. 1918. 1918. But it, easy. It's Ted Williams. I like, like, you don't even, you shouldn't even have to think about yeah, this that, one. That would be true. I, w- I would agree with you 100% there. Um, with, you know, uh, this, the, the guys behind him, I'd have to put as, as great all time Red Sox. Yastrzemski would be a nice argument were they no Ted Williams. Yes. Right? He would probably be, for a, a lot of other franchises, he'd be the franchise's best player. And, and would you put Pedro Martinez in, in that mix as greatest all time Red Sox? <sighs> I really don't know how many seasons he pitched. He pitched, for them. He pitched a lot of seasons there. I'll, I'll pull that up, and I, I think Clemens is also a guy. Who yeah, Clemens, pitched a long time. Clemens pitched there for a while. I don't think Schilling was there for particular. No, no, long. no. He he, he, would he be was on, pretty on mercenary list. for them. Uh, but uh, Ted Williams, you know, sort of uh, by a, a large margin, I think would be the greatest Red Sox of all time. Yeah, I feel like that's one you really don't even need to put up too much discussion. How about the other Sox? Right, they have a long history. Um, although they went a long time without winning the World Series from 1917 until 2005 um, so that kind of affects their great player pool um, so who's the number one in your estimation White Sox of all time hmm. I think this is another one where it's like it kind of comes down to a two horse race and it's hard to pick one between the two of them because I'm really not sure I think you got the big hurt mm-hmm. I think he has to be up there because mm-hmm. he was so good mm-hmm. And, Crazy career stats. And she was Joe Jackson. Yeah, uh, Joe Jackson, you know, obviously associated with the, um, the black the men out and being thrown out of baseball, although he hit 357 in the 1990 so, yeah, World it's like Series. How, if he, if that's kind of hard to see how he tanked. Yeah. Um, and, and a guy named Luke Appling, who was a great infielder for the White Sox for a long time. Uh, again, they didn't win any championships, so you probably have barely, if ever, heard of Luke Appling, who is Never a Hall of Famer. Okay. Great player, and a couple of the other White, uh, White Sox or Black Sox, as they're well known, the two Eddies, Eddie Sakode and Eddie Collins. Um, hey, you know those those were great players, but that was a long time ago. So I, I'd kind of go with your your Frank Thomas right there. Yeah, I think that's. I think it's just it's it's him or Jackson. I, I feel like the, they're so far and away 
you know, those kinds of players for that franchise. So uh, the Cleveland Indians have a uh, long history. Uh, they do have a couple of World Series in there, but only two uh, that I can think of in 1920 and 1948. So you would have to think about guys that were on those teams, and that's kind of where I got my first two picks. Yeah, and I think this is where it gets really hard for me because it's like also if you think back to those older the, – the Indian teams of the 90s, it's not like there's a lot of guys that you would be like, oh, that was an Indian guy for life. You know well, what I mean? it's funny you say that because uh, I, I did think Manny Ramirez – You know, I identified him for a long time as an Indian before he went to the Red Sox. And the reason that happens is he played eight years for both teams. And so a guy I that – I don't know where he goes. Probably the guy from that era that I would most identify with that is probably Tomei. Mm, yes, yes. And a Hall of Famer. A Hall of Famer. I think he would probably be up there from that era, but I, it would have to be probably one of those guys from the 40s. Series. Yeah, yeah. I, I would pick Bob Feller as my number one, and he was on the World Series winners in 1948. In fact, uh, he, the two games he pitched in the 48 World Series, he did not win either of them. And they uh, still they, won. They ended up winning the World Series anyway. Um, and Tris Speaker, who was the manager and player manager of the 19. 19- 20 Indians who won that amazing series. That, that, amazing yeah, that season, wild yeah, season, yeah. Years ago. So also a Hall of Famer, all-time great. Uh, Nat Lejoie played in the early uh, uh, 20th century. Great player, uh, didn't win any championships, but an all-timer has, you know, super high career average. And another shout-out to Lou Boudreau, who also played on those 48 Indians uh, and another great uh, great Indian player. So they've got four real strong candidates. Yeah, as far I, as I think especially when you get into the teams from the Central – because really, outside of the Royals, so many of them have been around for so long, even more so than I think the AL East. Because with the AL East, Baltimore wasn't always Baltimore. The Blue Jays and the Rays are expansion franchises that are definitely newer. You only really have the Yankees and the Red Sox that have been around since the beginning. But in the Central, the Indians, the Twins have been around in some capacity for a long time. The White Sox, the Tigers, those are all— You're talking about as as single market teams not having moved. Exactly. That makes a big difference because I think once a team moves, and especially when you change cities, it's not the same. Well, that's that's the perfect segue because the next one, and we kind of had this argument a little bit about the original Washington Senators Mm -hmm. uh, who in 1960 moved to Minnesota and became the Twins. Uh, Then they started another Washington. Washington Senators franchise ended up moving and became the Texas Rangers. So there are no more Washington Senators. We have the Nationals, and the Senators came out twice. And they used to say about the Senators um, way back that they are uh, for Washington, first in war, first in peace, last in the American League. <laughs> and, and they were they were a very bad team for a long time, but they were a really good team uh, in the twenties, uh, and they won the World Series uh, with an amazing performance by this guy, who I think is the number one. Senator or slash twin of all time. So we're going to argue about this maybe a little bit. And I think I will say that the senator twin connection has always been pretty strongly emphasized, even by the franchise itself. They've, they've, they've always kind of consider, considered themselves as a continuation. It doesn't feel as hmm. distinctly separate as, say, like the Brooklyn Dodgers versus the L.A. Dodgers, where it feels like hmm. the L.A. Dodgers really don't want anything to do with their Brooklyn history. They don't really talk about it or ever bring it up. That's that's interesting that you feel that way. I, I don't know why I feel the same, which is which is kind of weird because there's really not the, no difference between the Brooklyn Dodgers and the L.A. Dodgers switching cities. So Walter Johnson, uh, the big train, uh, to me, if you don't have him as your number one senator slash twin of all time. The other guys we have on the list, I think, are are great all-time players for that franchise. But this guy came in and, and pitched the seventh game of the World Series on, like, one day rest and won it when they – If you're going to – yeah. yeah, if you're going to count senators players as part of the Twins franchises, Johnson is number one because that's who he was. He was the dominant pitcher – you know, of the early era of baseball. So beyond him, though, if you went for, I, I don't, I don't think there are really obvious number two senator players that I. No, I, I, th- I think you, you moved like to, you, It's all twins players, after but, that. Yeah, yeah I, I would say. I mean, so. And you've got some guys to pick from. I mean, Harmon Kilbrew would certainly be up there. Rod Carew was one of my all-time favorites. I just I remember the year Rod Carew stole home seven times in a season. The seven times is kind of wild. Seven times, and and he tied a guy named Pete Beezer of the Dodgers. I never heard of, you know, record. But even steal home once in a season now is amazing. And certainly, I think you'd also have a guy like Kirby Puckett could be put up there. So you know, Kirby Puckett, yes, and and but a guy who isn't on there, Jack Morris. I don't know if I really identify with him as a as a 
twin. No, he did pitch that famous one nothing yeah, but like game. A to singular win the World game, Series. a singular right, season. Right. Now, yeah, that doesn't make you an iconic member an of that franchise. An all-time twin player. Yeah, so, exactly. Yes, yes. So I, I definitely, I, I like that list. I think Killebrew, like, Carew, and Puckett are terrific. Like, as valuable as he was, I don't think in the fifteen, you know, race for the Mets, nobody's ever considering a Cespedes an all-time Met by any stretch of the imagination. No, that would be true. That would be true. So uh, another quasi expansion team. They've been around a long time now, but the Kansas City Royals, mm-hmm. um, you know, have an all time, uh, a few all time greats, and they have a World Series winner in in the top guys. But I think the guy I have as number one never won a World Series. He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I don't think they did either. Because no. when, when did they? They kept losing to the Yankees. I'm, we're talking about George Brett and the mid seventies. Because outside, because the, the Royals won what World Series besides the one they won in sixteen or fifteen? They won the '85 World Series when Saber Hagen pitched them right. to the game, but that was after after George Brett. So George Brett, um, who by, by the way had a brother named Ken Brett, who pitched in the, for the Pirates and was known for his hitting prowess. His brother more than his pitching prowess. Um, but George Brett, um, one of the greatest players of all time. I mean, you know, in the conversation, we say Schmidt is the best third baseman. George Brett is pretty close, pretty up there. Not yeah. the defensive, you know, quite the player that Schmidt was, but one heck of a hitter. Oh yeah. And, but I think, yeah, it's really, this is another one of those like two horse races where it's like, cause the drop off after you get past Saber Hagee to some of the other guys, you know, that you might be putting up there in that position are like bad baseball players. It's just those two guys are kind of the standouts of the franchise through, you know, through their existence so and, far. And Saber Hagen, yeah. Identified Royals players. Saber Hagen gets the shout out for his performance in the 85 World Series. Remember, his wife was pregnant. They were having a baby and they kept shooting him in the dugout. And, you know, he was winning all these games for the Royals and how cool it was that he was had this family. It was like this thing that was happening. And, and yet he, he certainly didn't pitch that long with the Royals to be an all-time great like Brett had played all his all career, his, you know, and that's what that's rights. what this is a lot about. Like you have to remember that with this right. kind of discussion is that like you, you and then there are some great baseball players that won't end up in this discussion because they were just too all over the place with who they played for and uh, you know with and 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 you mentioned right you know that longevity is it and the next two guys who you don't really put in the same conversation because they played their entire career with the Royals and were great Royals Frank White and Willie Wilson um, they were members of those eighty five teams as well and they won the World Series so they get an inclusion in there but neither frank white nor willie wilson are in the hall of fame nor should they be Mm -hmm. so but they do get shout outs for being amongst the greatest being great royals yeah correct correct correct. so tigers boy this is a layup as far as i'm concerned yeah i i think it's just just like it's one of those where like there are certain guys that like embody the franchise yes and they're so meaningful to the overall fabric of baseball that, like, I, I, how is it anybody other than Ty Cobb? Right, right. He has the highest career average, I think, in the history of baseball at 367. Okay. Next question. Next question. Yeah, exactly. Like, and it's like, and it's not like there aren't other guys that are like Hank Greenberg. What a great Hall of Fame. Al Kaline. Al Kaline. What a great. And and how about how about Miguel Cabrera possibly being an all time Tiger? Because if you think about it, he went from the Marlins to the Tigers and never went anywhere else. Right, right. And I mean, that was like back in like 02, I think, because I don't think he was on that 03 he wasn't. Marlins team he wasn't. that won the he World wasn't. Series. He only won the one. Did he win one with? He was on the 97 Marlins. But then he won one with the Tigers, right? The Tigers have not they, won. They just made it to the World Series. They haven't won since 84. So, but he's been with them and I mean, he won a triple crown. Right, he won a triple crown. So he's got to be there and, and another great Tiger, Charlie Geringer, you got to, Put him in there. Uh, again, the but Tigers. But it's just like you have to compete against Ty Cobb. Right. The Tigers won in 45, and then they didn't win again until 80. Uh, into, excuse me. They won in 68, and then again in uh, 84. So you think about the teams that were part of those championship teams. Uh, the 68 Tigers, Mickey Lolich, great Tiger, but probably not an all-time Tiger. Won three games in no, one World un- Series un- at a moment. It, 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 unfortunately for him, because it's such a long and storied franchise, that you have just so much more competition. And they had Ty Cobb. Yeah. 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 So how about the uh, the athletics? And here's another team that has a um, uh, storied history in having moved uh, twice, actually. They, they mm-hmm. first were in Philadelphia, and then they moved to Kansas City um, and in the mid-50s, and then they ended up in Oakland. So the athletics, you know, you, you like to argue, and I think there's merit in that, that can you really put the Philadelphia athletics players back at the turn of the you Well, know, especially because we counted century? some of those Philadelphia athletic players for the Phillies because it was in the same city. 
That's right. So I think I think also with Oakland, it, you kind of get a break because you get an easy guy you can put up there at the top, I feel like, for the Oakland Athletics. Oh, so who's your greatest Oakland A of all time? Ricky Henderson. Yeah, I would put him there too. Like I think – there's there's probably other guys, you know, Reggie Jackson was Yeah, I mean Reggie Jackson he he sort of like Manny Ramirez a little bit played a couple of places a lot and was effective for the Yankees. Yeah, and so he it kind of splits his loyalties. A little bit, a little bit. Unlike yeah. Ricky Henderson who the majority of his greatness is just he played forever. Right. And by the way, Reggie Jackson ain't getting on the Yankee list. That's for sure. As good as he was and as yeah. amazing as that World Series game was, much less everything else. But two other all-time athletics uh, and Hall of Famers and the guy who won the first two MVPs, Jimmy Fox. Um, I mean, this is an all-time I think we player. I think we put him on the Phillies list though. I'm pretty sure we did no 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 he didn't play for the phillies i didn't uh, even think i had somebody else uh and al simmons uh played for a lot of years another great hall of fame player for the uh, the athletics but i i think uh, we'll stick with ricky henderson and the oakland a's because going back to the a's championships uh in 1910 1911 and 1913 that that's going back a little too far to ask people to try to remember how great those guys were at that for, in a city that they didn't you know has nothing to do with their where it is currently so another team that um, has uh, a chance to win the World Series this year, I much to not. everybody's no, dismay. No, and that would be terrible. I'd be so. Everybody oh, hates no. the Astros. I kind of like that. No, I don't want that. No. I, I don't really want them to win, but it's it's they're they're kind of you know doing it just to just tick everybody off. It sounds like <laughs> that would definitely tick everybody off. So so who is your number one? Well, not a Houston Astro. I guess. Yeah. Houston yeah. Astro of all time. Who? Which league <laughs> were they playing Which in? League, yeah. <laughs> I think it's tricky because it's one of those situations where you have a World Series. It's recent as, you know, as tainted as it may be in some people's eyes. But um, I think it might go to Bagwell. In my mind, in this circumstance, just because he was, I mean, I mean, it, certainly for me, when I was growing up, he was who I identified the Astros with. Mm -hmm. So I feel like. The killer Bees. The Killer Bees. Do you remember who the third one was? Or, Derek Bell, if, Craig oh, Biggio, Jeff good. Bagwell. Very good. Derek Bell was the third one. Right. And Biggio's on our list as greatest Astro of all time. Um, neither uh, Bagwell nor Biggio obviously won a World Series. Um, with the Astros, they got to the World Series, mm -hmm. uh, and and Beltran, the uh, the fourth B, uh, but he wasn't on them when Bell and, and no, that was, he was, was that was he, later. And, and I also think it's the kind of thing where, like, if I was gonna pick a guy from this current group of Astros, maybe Altuve. Yeah, I'd say so too. Correa would probably be the other one I would consider because the thing is that makes it kind of easier is that. A lot of the guys that have helped the Astros get here have been homegrown guys, you know. They, right, right. It's not like they've the pitching they've brought in, but not I, the hitting. I think we were saying Altuve has his is his tenth year now, so he was he's just about you know eligible for and, the Hall of Fame on his. And if he keeps this up, for right, he needs three a few seasons. more years. And he, and he didn't have a, a a great regular season this year, but he's having a pretty good gonna, playoff. He, so I, far. I think this is going to be one of those seasons that is going to it's going to be hard to hold against them players. And we we I don't know if we talked uh, you know much about him uh, yet, uh, and, and I guess we have three teams to go in the Western Division, and this player played for all three of those teams. I hadn't—I just thought of this now. So um, in addition for playing for the Mets, he came up with the Mets. Nolan Ryan. So where do you put Nolan Ryan I think the greatest th player of a franchise? And this is hard because he just pitched in so many places. I think ultimately in my mind, because of what I know, I feel like I would either be putting him like in as an Astro or – or, or a ranger probably because right. that's where i feel like he had the majority of his best but it's like at the same time he was a guy where so much of what made him incredible was for the length of time that he did it that it's difficult to really be associating his greatness with any particular franchise i think he compiled most of his stats strikeout wise with the angels so, you know, that that's something that he had 373 strikeouts one year for the Angels. That's a lot of strikeouts. All right. So and then the Angels were not a good team. And so he had the the uh, habit of playing for teams that weren't really great teams. And yet when he had a chance to pitch in the playoffs, finally, he, he did very well. And his time with the Rangers, he he did a guy pitched seven no hitters. Uh, so I, I don't know. I would probably identify him as a, it, an angel or an it's Astro. hard. Yeah, because he, he he and he played it was all in the same division, too. Right. That's which is really interesting. 
interesting because he played for the Mariners, uh, not the Mariners, the Angels, the Astros, and the Rangers all in the Western Division. Yeah. I don't think he's the best player for any of those franchises because of the mixture of time he played for all of them. Yes. So um, I yeah, tend to agree with that. We'll, we'll stick with um, with Bagwell as our number one there. So let's talk about the Angels. And, and, and if Nolan Ryan isn't the greatest Angel of all time, who is? So this was the franchise I was talking about back at the very beginning of the episode where I think – it's interesting because if you think back to that team that did win the World right. Series. Who's on that team? I, I, maybe Edmonds, but I don't know how much you're saying he was. He's an angel? An angel. He played a lot of seasons in Anaheim. Yeah, I don't know if he played. I think he played more for the Cardinals than he did for the Angels. He might have. That's a thing. Garrett Anderson? Right, right. Like, Just because he was there a long time and then the Angels Garrett fans Erstrad? Oh, God. Or oh, Tim Salmon. How Tim about that? Tim Salmon, yeah. yeah I, I think for me – that's why even though that he's not you know I don't think he's played the playoffs in his career. He's never played in the playoffs. But you, you, it's We're it's the, the it's the guy. fish man. Yeah. It is the fish yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Mike Trout. He is good at baseball. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I think uh, you know we, we a lot of people like to say this is his 10th year so he has now just completed his 10th season didn't make the playoffs again and he is eligible to make the Hall of Fame if he never played another game. And he should be in if he and did. I would agree with that. He, his when you look at his stats you have to you, you look at his stats and you're like, "Oh wow, he's incredible at offensively." And then you're like, "Oh wait, he's also a gold glove defensive center fielder." Yeah. Yeah, the that, greatest the greatest angel of all time is neither a Hall of Famer nor a World Series winner, and he's far and, and away. And he's never even made the playoffs. He's never even made the playoffs, and he is absolutely the number one all time. So um, another team that has not had the pleasure of winning the World Series. Mm-hmm. I think this is an interesting one because even though they've never made the World Series, uh, there's a lot of guys he can put on this list for them. I feel like there's like at least three or four guys you could put up near the near the very top of this list. I, I agree. I, it's, it's funny how a team that has no success like that has three guys. You think, wow, these are all time great players. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, it's interesting because a guy that you would some people would think and even I thought was should have been on this list for them. But, you know, when you really think about the competition he's facing and what he did in his career is Randy Johnson. Actually, he played 10 seasons in Seattle. He only played – but he played eight in Arizona, and he was much, much better in Arizona than he was in Seattle. He was better. Remember, the, the ERA stats for the National League will always be lower than the American League. So the 289 uh, – so like 3-4 or something. Like 3-4 for, uh, uh, for the Mariners, a little bit different, but that's that's sort of typical. Uh, I'd agree. I mean it's it's another guy. It's hard, kind of hard to, to place him. But I think still it's easy because you can kind of just – the number one, I think, is pretty easy, even though he has some stiff competition. It's Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah, and 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 for me too, and, and that's and Edgar Martinez would be my number two. Ichiro should be up there for them though. How is Ichiro not the best player in the history of the Mariners? Exactly, that kind of tells you that like when Ichiro is in, and even then you have a guy like A Rod who played a lot of good seasons in Seattle. Obviously, A Rod was spread around too many places. So no, he doesn't get to be anybody's best player. And so I don't think I think a lot of franchises would also be fine not having him on that list. <laughs> I think so too. Like we, we, we prefer not to have anything to do with him. Thank you. Yeah, well, he, he and, and he's a Met fan. I have to like put that aside sometimes because. I'm so glad he's not the guy that got it, that ended up buying the Mets. Yeah, very. So the Senators, uh, the revamped Senators, right, when they started the second time after they moved to Minnesota, uh, they ended up becoming – they only lasted like a season or so before – That kind of makes it easy because there's not a lot of players right, you can be looking back. Oh, that one Senator season. It's really the Texas Rangers. And, and, and the Texas Rangers also are a franchise that has never won a World Series. So we kind of got a whole bunch that finished at the bottom of the, of the AL West this year, interestingly enough. <laughs> yeah, I think – I think this is interesting because, again, kind of like the Mariners, they have some guys you would be like, oh, yeah, he deserves to be on that list. And I think for greatest Ranger of all time, it probably comes down to two guys in my mind just because of how they kind of stand above. And the guy that I think most people would have as third did spend enough time in other places during his career mm-hmm. that it kind of becomes a two horse race. I think it comes down to Yvonne Rodriguez. Versus Adrian Beltre. Right, Beltre will be a Hall of Famer. He just retired one season. Um, I, I, we all talk about first ballots and the voting. And so Adrian Beltre should be a first first ballot Hall of Famer as far as I'm concerned. Um, Yvonne Rodriguez, Pudge, one of the greatest catchers of all time. 
I probably, because it was a catcher and because neither of them won a World Series, and, 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 I and might you can, favor him. And slightly. the other thing is, is you, you can make the argument that Rodriguez might be the best catcher of all time. There is an argument you, to be made You there. can make that argument. I don't think even if you really wanted to, you could make the argument that Beltre was the best third baseman of all time. I think there would be enough people ahead of him on that list that it would be hard to really to, – in the same way – Stalwart defensive player though as right. well as being an offensive player. But he's player. got – Guys like Schmidt in front of him, right, right, right. right. And Irod has, you know, you know he's has John, bench in front of but him. But Irod was up. Like I think it's easier to make that argument for him. I, I I see your point. I think that's true. That 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 his and doing it at the catcher position, I think, mm-hmm. just carries a little bit more weight. The longevity, and, the the defensive ability. Late in his career, he didn't go in the tank like some people do. Yeah, he was fantastic. And then even then, you still have guys on that team. Like I think probably guys that to round out who else you would probably throw up there for the Rangers. Probably Palmero. Everybody hates Rafael, Palmero. but he deserves to be up there. I just yeah, think I he spent he spent time with the Orioles. Correct. It, He's an Oriole, but I think he was a a ranger more than anything else. So that I think, I think that's his rightful place. And I think a guy that also was in our hall of very good that kind of defend that deserves to be up there is Juan Gonzalez. Even though the advanced MVP winner, even though the advanced stats hate him, he would probably be up there. And it's there. kind of hard to go out there and and, I'm, and hit a the great guy. That. Yeah, hit, hit as well as he did. He looked so strong and big up there, and he was just not a great fielder. Being nice, Ex- exactly. <laughs> and I think it's also the kind of thing of what we value in a batter has changed so much in such a short time that guys that would traditionally consider great and by all metrics were great players. We just look back with less, you know, fondness on because we're like, Oh, you didn't do things the way we value now. Yeah. The big power hitters that don't hit for average, uh, e- even though paradoxically, those guys he did are hit for average a couple of years. Yeah, he did. Himself. But now those guys are starting to come back because people have realized, Hey, you know what? If you hit home runs, it's valuable. So to, you know, to be a franchise's best player, uh, we've established, you need to play there, let's say seven years or more. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Really, I mean, it, it's it, kind of hard to do. This is why Robbie Alomar yeah, doesn't exactly. get you know, It's get hard to go below that. And the Blue Jays. And and there are guys that we can't really place because they've had that aspect of their career being moved around. Uh, A-Rod, for instance. Uh, Manny Ramirez. You know, I, I think, you know, like, like I said before, Ange, um, Indian or Red Sox, whatever Dodger, it is. you know, just not, too many places. Not the greatest player in the franchise because you, you can't identify him. If you can't identify him as being part of the franchise, then he can't be the best player for the franchise. It's like a guy like, why a guy like Granky? Right. Doesn't show up, even if though he was great for the Royals, he was one truly a mercenary pitcher for a lot of his career, yeah, and that, that does not speak anything to anything less than his greatness because every team wanted him. And and Clemens probably would fall into that category as well because he won World Series all over the place and won Cy Youngs all over the place, uh, and doesn't really have an identity as in any of those places. He exists outside of any individual team. <laughs> you think of Roger Clemens, you don't think of the team he belonged to. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. Well, uh. This was fun. Yeah. I, I think um, we kind of have a, a, an interesting list of players of old and new. And they've got a, some people are out there right now that are playing that are, have the chance to be the greatest player in their franchise. Uh, they're probably playing in Houston, uh, we think. Um, and I don't know if there are any left of the teams to play. Uh, the, the Dodgers don't have any guys that have quite been around long enough to get into the all-time yeah. Dodger conversation. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it's because – Kershaw, the, yeah, maybe? Yeah, Ker- the problem is that he's got another lefty yeah, he's with competing K-name. with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that makes it really hard. Uh so that I think, yeah, and then the Braves. The Braves, have, everybody's 25 years old. Yeah, yeah. Acuna <laughs> could be it one day. And right. you know what? They win this year. Freddie Freeman starts to creep into that conversation. Uh, a little bit. I, I really fear that player and respect him a lot. He's, he's, he's he, a great player. Yeah. I like him a lot more than I like Chipper Jones. Not for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. Subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform. And you can follow us on Twitter at AlmostCoop.